Okay, so in the last video we introduced that we were going to be going through the Cloud Resume Challenge. And so in this video we were going to be talking about AWS Access, Setup and how to get your account set up so you can begin the challenge. Quite a few things to go through today. We're going to be talking about setting up things like MFA. We're going to be talking about how to set up your command line in a way that's going to help you to interact with AWS in a way that's easier. It's quite a, quite a lot of information to take in and quite a few things to set up. But if you go through these steps and you set everything up correctly, you're going to have such a better time. Uh, you know, your account's going to be more secure and you're going to sleep better at night when you know that um, everything's set up in a way that makes sense. So. Yes, I'll go ahead and jump into that and show you the different steps that I think you should take when you're setting up your AWS account. First thing you're gonna to want to do is actually create the account yourself. So it's been quite a while since I've done this, but just follow the steps to create your account. It's gonna dump you into the AWS dashboard and then we're gonna take things from there. I'll share this document as well. I'll put this into a repository and share the link in the video too. So what are we going to want to do after that? So the first thing we're going to do is set up MFA for your root account. So what is the root account? So when you create an AWS account, obviously you have sort of a username and password, same as you would with any other application. And then you're gonna have what's called a root account. And that root account is the, you know, that initial user that you're created with. So what you're gonna to need to do is straight away, go ahead and set up MFA for that root account. Let me just show you how that works. So, you're gonna land in here in the dashboard. What you wanna do is go ahead and head over to IAM. So IAM is the sort of user and permissions part of AWS. And you're gonna go into users, you'll find your user and what you want to do is apply MFA to this user straight away. So you go user, security credentials, and then we've got assign MFA device. Follow those steps and assign MFA to that user. The reason this is so important is if uh, someone gets access to that root account, it's basically that they can do anything with your AWS account. Because AWS doesn't have like a default billing limit out of the box, you know, you're basically putting yourself at risk of getting a really high bill. That happened to me one time. I got a $3,000 bill when I was a student. Uh, it was pretty horrifying. And I wrote an article about that and I'll share that link to the article if you want to read about it and some of the things that I learned from that. But yeah, when you log in with that root account, secure it immediately with an MFA device. Uh, and that could be your phone. You could, there's a bunch of other options when you follow those steps. And so the next thing you're gonna to want to do after that is to create an IAM user. So the reason we want to make an IAM user is because we don't want to use the root account anymore. We want to use a separate user. Uh, we're gonna forget about this root account after uh, once we create this other user. So let me go ahead and create another user. I'm gonna call it Lou and I'm gonna give it programmatic and I'm actually going to give it console access as well. I'll let it generate a password for me and I'm gonna go ahead and create this. I'm not gonna set permissions on this just yet, but I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, I'll ignore tags for now and I'm gonna create myself a user. Cool, so I've got it and now I've got an access key and a secret access key and this is for programmatic access. This is gonna be really important, uh, but we'll come back to that in a second. So we've got our user and also one of the next step is to assign permissions. But before we go ahead and assign the permissions, I just want to talk about this step number four, which is setting up AWS Vault. Now, let me show you the page for this. So I didn't know about AWS Vault for a very long time after using AWS and it has helped me massively more recently. And I seriously suggest you go ahead and install this. Looks like they've got capabilities to install it on pretty much every operating system, which is wonderful. Uh, but I'm using it on Mac and it works perfectly for me. So let me go ahead and set up AWS Vault actually using this new user. So if I go into here and let me copy this command. So I've already got AWS Vault installed, but if you follow the steps, you can get it installed for yourself. So I'm gonna create a user in AWS Vault and it's gonna, access, it's gonna ask me for an access key ID, which I've just got here, access key ID, paste that in and secret key, which I'm gonna show and I'm gonna copy that, boom. So just need to put in my computer password so it goes onto the keychain and we're done. So that's created me a new user called my user and that's just a profile on your machine that's linked to those credentials and it's very cool, let me show you why. So let me show you this as well, which is AWS Vault Exec and now what this should do is it should allow it to execute a command using the context of that user. So using these user credentials and it's going to call this AWS CLI command. If you don't have the AWS CLI installed, also go ahead and install that as well. Uh, it's not something that is necessary for this step, but I just want to show you how this works. So if I go ahead and run this, just need to put my password in and it should run this AWS command. 
Wonderful. Okay, so we've got access denied, but I'm expecting that because I didn't actually apply any permissions to my user. But it looks like it's uh, actually using the, the credentials to make the call, which is wonderful. And the apart from actually being able to execute commands, which is kind of useful, and you know you could do that with AWS CLI in certain ways. But one of the things that I really like about this particular um, CLI is also the ability to log in. So the AWS login can be a real pain. Uh, if you've got, you know, if you're juggling multiple users or you've got access to different AWS accounts. So this is just like, it's a very clean way of doing this. And I really suggest that you install this. Um, it'll really make your life a lot easier. You'll basically never have to go through the AWS login page ever again. And it's just a nice way of, you know, storing all your different credentials and you can list them out and things like that. But anyway, let me go back to my user. So we've created that user. We've got our access key and our secret access key. One thing to note here with these things is these will terminate or well, you won't see these again uh, after this point in time. So look, this is the last time that these credentials will be available to download. So you can download them if you want, but in reality, now that you've got them stored in your vault, uh, we've got them for later if we need them, but you won't see them again. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close this now, close that down. And now I've got my new user called Lou. Let me go in there and let me assign some permissions to this. So. What, there's different ways of assigning permissions. Don't worry about that too much for now. What we're going to do is just actually attach some policies directly to our user so that they can start to do things. Now, if you remember from before, the command that I was calling was AWS S3 LS. So S3 is a service within AWS and we need to get access to this S3 service. So if I go back into IAM and I search for S3, there is a policy that we can apply called Amazon S3 full access. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that up here add permissions and what that's doing now is that user now has access to do pretty much anything with regards to s3 and only s3 which is nice because it means from a security standpoint if anyone ever accesses my credentials or gets hold of them that they can only their damage is limited they can only access s3 now generally speaking you want to make these policies or these permissions as tightly scoped as possible uh, which is called the principle of least privilege and there's different ways of doing that. We won't get into that today, but maybe we'll come back to that in another video. Um, but just keep that in mind as you want to apply the minimal amount of permissions to those uh, accounts that you're using. And this isn't just like an arbitrary security thing. As I mentioned before, if your account gets hacked or compromised, it's just gonna help you as well, not end up with uh, some ginormous bill or the impact of that is going to be lessened uh, significantly if you do this. So. We've applied our permissions and we used to get an access denied. So let's have a, let's run it again and see what happens. Boom, nothing happens because this is actually listing out S3 buckets and this is an entirely clean AWS account. So just for the fun of it, why don't we just go into S3? Now we'll get onto this topic as well later, but I don't actually recommend doing, clicking and creating things in the console very much. Uh, I'm gonna do this as an example for now, but we'll get back to that later and we'll talk about what is infrastructure as code and why that's the superior way to create resources in AWS. And this infrastructure as code idea is also something referenced inside of the Cloud Resume Challenge. So we'll get back onto that. But for now, let's just create a bucket up here to show the case. And so this needs to be unique. So I am just gonna create something super random and wonderful, create bucket. Uh, bucket name must be between, <laughs> okay. It's too random. Uh, let's try that. Create bucket. And so this should now create me an S3 bucket. Don't worry too much about what S3 buckets are for right now. If you don't know, uh, that's okay. So that's, let me make that a bit bigger. So that's actually created the S3 bucket for me. Wonderful. Now, if I go over here, list my S3 buckets, I'm hoping to see it. Wonderful. There we go. We have an S3 bucket. So everything is linked up together and working nicely. So. These are the first few steps I suggest that you go through. Uh, we'll start digging into some of the next bits and pieces from the Cloud Resume Challenge after that, but go ahead and get all this stuff set up first because that's one of the first things you'll need to do. And this is just gonna make things a little bit easier, a little bit more secure, and it's gonna get you off to a good start. So yeah, go ahead and get that set up. Okay, and that's it. So we've been through all the different things that you should probably set up with your AWS account uh, to get set up for the Cloud Resume Challenge. Now you should have a command line set up, you should have access credentials, and you should be ready to go. So we're, in the next video, we'll talk about first steps. I haven't actually thought about it just yet, but we'll talk about the first steps with the Cloud Resume Challenge, but you're ready to go. You've got your AWS credentials, you've got your command line set up, which is great, that's the first step. So 
yep, I'll wrap things up here and hopefully I'll see you over in the next video.